Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. A corporate giveaway? Through the impact fee, in the first year alone, $190 million is going to be taken and returned to our local communities for the impacts that occur. By year five, it'll be $400 million annually. And in the first 10 years, it's $3 billion. Now, when you think about it, you wonder why so many on the other side might be feeling so defensive. Perhaps because over the last four years, they couldn't get a bill into law and signed by the governor? Let's be honest. Let's take a common sense perspective. Natural gas was discovered in the further depths and has presented great opportunities for landowners, for communities, for people who are looking to have family sustaining employment, for corporate headquarters to come in, to have access to cleaner natural gas, to be able to use it in equipment, in dryers for your homes, hot water heaters, stoves. The development of the natural gas industry here in Pennsylvania has been a significant positive, but we need to do it in a responsible manner. So much time has been spent on discussing how to properly manage the growth of the Marcellus natural gas industry such that we get all the positives and still get environmental protection and still get a return of dollars to our local communities for the impacts that have occurred in that development. This is a very, very common sense solution, folks, in the end, because we have one question in front of us. We want to continue to develop natural gas because it benefits consumers, it benefits employees and employers, and it benefits those private property owners who have it on their land. But we want to do it in a balanced way that protects citizens, protects the environment, and makes sure that some of the earnings is returned particularly to the local communities to deal with the impacts at hand. That's it. You can get into all the specific details, but either you are for a common sense, balanced approach to the development of the natural gas discovery, or you are just always no. You don't get to have it both ways. Oh, I'd like more money but I don't want to vote yes, because it can always be more. I want more regulations, or you can vote no. I want more return of the dollar to the local communities for the impacts, or you can be no. You can actually seek predictability, and sustainability in the industry so that it continues to flourish, or you can be no. The reality is we are on the verge of being able to place a bill on the governor's desk, a bill that admittedly he has sought, 
that has gone to a conference committee, passed the Senate, passed our chamber, and become law so that we can move to the other important agenda items in front of us. Keep in mind, for many of us, how we deal with this Marcellus Shale is not a prime agenda item in the sense of trying to restore fiscal responsibility to the state or to enhance private sector job creation. But it is an issue that has developed because of the discovery of natural gas in these further depths in a significant part of our state. And caring people want to make sure that it flourishes for the family sustaining jobs, for the royalties to the property owners, for the headquarters, for the ancillary businesses, for the consumers, while at the same time protecting citizens and the environment. It is a balance. In any person, you can find 101 reasons not to be for something, but you can only find one reason to get to yes, because you are ready to govern and be a part of a solution. And we on our side, with many, I think, colleagues on the other side, are about governing and are about solutions. And we have the opportunity to provide that solution today with finality by voting yes and putting this on the governor's desk. Then we can talk more about fiscal responsibility. We can talk more about private sector job creation because that's where we need to head by getting this done today. I think it is important that people recognize that it is a levying of an impact fee on natural gas development. Impact fees have been around for some time and they first emerged in the late 1970s as a result of taxpayer concerns and reductions in federal and state aid for local infrastructure. That's how an impact fee developed. Currently, many states, counties, and local governments across the country engage in some form of impact fee to help provide the funding necessary for critical infrastructure and other important community needs. Impact fees generally, and this one in particular, are used to provide for a number of uncompensated costs currently being absorbed by local communities and the state. These include the ability to fund upgrades to affected roads and bridges, water and sewer systems, which are being strained, admittedly, by increased usage. The impact fee is determined locally. Let me restate that. The impact fee we are about to pass is being determined locally, meaning our counties and municipalities must approve local ordinances to enact the fee. This is enabling legislation, folks. Economic conditions are to be taken into account, and the fee is created on a scale which is, allows it to phase out gradually over years. Another important feature tied to the impacts is the fact that as the price of natural gas rises, this will likely equal additional drilling, which will in turn mean higher impacts to address. So there should be more revenues to address those higher impacts. The sliding scale approach based on the per MCF development of the natural gas is a common sense mechanism. It is still an impact fee nonetheless. It is also important to note that impact fees differ in that they are historically authorized through a state's authority to protect the health, welfare, and safety of its citizens and that is exactly what we are doing in this prime legislation. The impact fee we are addressing is designed to provide for infrastructure improvements based upon direct impacts, which have created a strain throughout the state and to provide services that are vital to the health, welfare, and safety of each and every Pennsylvania citizen. Look, many of us have had to dig deep into this issue. 
far deeper than we probably ever thought we would. But I can tell you, for one, given the balanced approach and the recognition that given the discovery of natural gas in the state that we had to come to the table to address it, I am not only pleased with my vote of yes here in a second, but I am absolutely convinced that it is the right vote. Because I led like you in voting yes, I governed like you in voting yes, I reached a solution like you in voting yes. We will have put a bill on the governor's desk that will put this issue to so the side, taking into account all of the myriad of information and all the myriad of information that so many of my hardworking colleagues have brought to the table. No singular person drafted this bill. No singular person's interest dominated this bill. This is a bill that has balanced what everybody's concerns were brought to the issue at hand. I applaud the good gentleman from Butler County. He has put significant work in on this bill and has led. He has been a leader. And I am glad to throw my support behind the hard work that he put in and that so many of you did. Even for some of you that are voting no, I suspect you'd like to be voting yes because you know you have impacted this important piece of legislation and that overall you know it is beneficial to this state. Please vote yes.